Daniel and Cherry have been talking on the phone for a while. Today, they decided to go for a coffee. This is the first time they're going to meet in person, and they haven't seen any pictures of each other. Cherry texts Daniel, I will wear a pair of pink hair clips. When Daniel arrives at the coffee shop, he sees three ladies, and surprisingly, all of them are wearing pink hair clips. Can you help Daniel find his date? Take a look at the first table carefully. There are two coffee mugs. This means that this lady is already with someone. The lady sitting at the second table is already enjoying her coffee and a book. Clearly, she's not here for a date. And the third lady is wearing a beautiful dress and her table is empty. Therefore, she's Cherry. Cherry's ex-boyfriend, Drake, is a powerful magician. He doesn't want to let her go, so he kidnaps Cherry and locks her on top of a high tower. With only one window and no doors at all. Also, Drake sets a magic fire around the tower for extra protection and leaves. Cherry realizes that she has little time to escape. She looks around and sees three magic potions. The bottles are labeled. One would give her incredible physical strength. The other one would turn Cherry into a vampire. And the third one would let her summon any animal. Which potion should she use? Even if Cherry destroys the tower, she can do nothing with the magic fire. And no animal can help her escape. But if she becomes a vampire, she'll be able to turn into a bat and fly away. Cherry escapes and finds herself in an enchanted forest. Can you find four magical creatures here? Take a look at this cave. There's a troll hiding inside. Also, there are two pixies sitting on the flowers. And this tree is a wood goblin. Cherry goes ahead and finds a road sign. There are three routes leading to the nearest village. An immortal fire-breathing dragon is guarding the first path. The second route lies through the lands of a witch. She hates men and turns every guy who dares to enter her land into a stone statue. And the third path is a habitat for leopards. Can you help Cherry choose the best route? The second option sounds good. Cherry is a woman, so the witch has no reason to turn her into a statue. Because she only hates men. Cherry asks the witch to help her find the village. The witch offers a deal. If you crack my pattern riddle, I'll tell you. But if not, you'll be my servant forever. Cherry had nothing to do but agree. You can have pepper, but not salt. You can have beef, but not chicken. Carrots, broccoli, and cabbage. But no potato in any form. Oh, and you have to eat with a spoon. Can you help Cherry crack the pattern? She's only allowed items containing two of the same letters in a row. The witch helps Cherry find a road. Three drivers stop and offer a ride to the village. Can you help Cherry choose the safest option? There's a zombie hiding in the back of the first car. And there are no passenger seats in the third car. Although the second car's windshield is cracked, it's still the best choice. Finally, Cherry finds the village. This place is magical. Many amazing creatures live here. Suddenly, a half-hippo approaches Cherry and yells, Please help me. One of these guys had stolen my clothes. Can you guess who? Take a look at the dog's badge. It says Hippo. 
So it was the dog who stole his shirt. Cherry meets the local farmer, Timothy. He used to keep chickens in another country. Things were going well and he made good money. But then he bought a big farm in this village and moved there. Soon, Timothy got to know that floods are very frequent in this area. But he didn't get upset and decided to breed ducks instead of chickens. Why? Ducks can swim, so floods aren't so dangerous for them. Timothy invites Cherry over for dinner at home. But unfortunately, Cherry's ex-boyfriend Drake had already found them. He captures Timothy and Cherry at the farmer's house. Suddenly, the phone rings. Drake allows Timothy to take the phone, but he can't reveal the situation. Otherwise, Drake will use his magic wand to turn them into snakes. So Timothy replies, Hey mom, how can I help you? I'm home and about to go to bed. If it's not an emergency, can I call you later? I'm really sleepy. 30 minutes later, the police arrive, confiscate the magic wand and rescue the guys. How did Timothy ask for help? He held the mute button saying everything except the words, help, home, emergency, and call. The detective gives Drake a chance to get freedom. He can pass through one of these three doors. Jungles full of dangerous animals are hiding behind the first door. Behind the second door, there's a tank with ice water that is impossible to stand in for even a minute. And there's a giant fire-breathing dino behind the third door. Which door is more or less safe? Drake should pick the third door. Dinos don't breathe fire, and they went extinct millions of years ago. Drake returns to his castle and discovers that someone had broken all the bottles with his precious potions in his lap. Drake gets furious and interrogates his three goblin servants. Willie says, I was cleaning the castle all day long. I didn't even enter your lab today. Tilly says, I was picking roses in the garden in the morning. Then I entered your lab to bring rose petals for your potions. Everything was fine. And Billy says, I was cooking dinner in the kitchen and then I went to the bathroom to take a quick shower. Who's lying? Tilly, he didn't pick the roses. They're still in the garden. Meanwhile, Timothy drives Cherry home. They stop to buy something on the way. Can you guess what exactly by just looking at this image? Kiwi! Then Timothy takes two pictures of Cherry. Can you find 10 differences between them? Here they are! Someone robbed Cherry's house when she was on a picnic on the 4th of July. The detective finds four suspects and questions them about what they were doing that day. Bobby, the fireman, says, I was on duty the day before. I was very tired, so I went sleeping all day long. Nick is a student. He says, I was celebrating Independence Day with my family. Rick, the manager, says, It was a holiday and I was playing games with my roommates. Then we watched TV all night. And Kyle, the postman, says, I was at the post office all day. All my colleagues saw me. The detective identifies the robber immediately. What about you? It was Kyle. He couldn't work at a post office on the 4th of July. It's a public holiday. Cherry receives her first salary and hides the cash in her closet. Cherry's three roommates are not at home at this time. So she just leaves the money and goes to the gym right away. 
After a while, Cherry returns home and discovers that her money had been stolen from the closet. She starts looking all over the room, but finds no clues. Suddenly, her three roommates enter the room. Cherry asks each of them, Has anyone stolen my money? Bella replies, I was in college all day. I just got home from lunch and I didn't enter this room. Anna says, I came home for lunch as well, but after Bella. I opened the closet door to look for some documents, but there was no money inside. And Megan says, I had no idea that you were hiding cash in the closet. I just returned from work. You should talk to the security guard. Who's the thief? Bella must have concluded that if Cherry is searching this room, money should have been stolen only from here, so she doesn't sound suspicious. But Anna said that she had searched the closet and found no money. Meanwhile, Cherry didn't mention the closet in the first place. Therefore, Anna is the thief. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Just look at this. A car has crashed into a restaurant window, smashing it. Uh -oh. Detective Harris has come to investigate the case. There are two suspects, Julie and Douglas. But each of them claims that the other person did it. Can you help the detective figure out who is lying? It's Julie. The tire tracks on the ground belong to her car. Adam was driving home late at night when he noticed he was about to run out of gas. He stopped at a gas station to fill his tank and buy some snacks. Inside, there was a cashier and another customer dressed in black. When Adam came up to the employee to pay, she told him $5.05. Adam paid, went outside, and called the police to report an emergency. Why did he do it? The cash register showed 1835, but the cashier said 505, which looks like SOS. Detective Harris was walking along the street when he heard some noise. He decided to check out what had happened. It turned out that some man had grabbed an elderly lady's bag and run away. The detective ran in the direction the witnesses showed him. After he turned the corner, he saw three doors. He knocked on the first one. The apartment owner, Patrick, opened the door. The man told the detective he'd just returned from a long run. Another man, Jerry, opened the second door. He said he'd been playing basketball behind his house. The third apartment belonged to Raymond, a musician. He had just finished composing a new piece of music. After talking to all these people, Detective Harris understood who the criminal was. Have you figured it out? The thief is Jerry. He claimed he'd been playing basketball, but he was holding a football while talking to the detective. Sarah and her sister, Mary, were doing some shopping. When they were leaving a grocery store, Sarah pointed at some young man and exclaimed, Look, my nephew is over there. Her sister replied, Oh, right, but it's not my nephew. How is it possible? The young man is Mary's son. Gemma returned from Asia and brought a precious porcelain figurine. She organized a party and invited all her friends to tell them about her journey. They had a great time, but after her friends left, the woman realized the figurine had disappeared. She called the police and showed them the photo she had taken at the party. One of the officers immediately realized who had stolen the figurine. Did you understand it too? It was this girl. She hid the figurine under her hat. At 9 a.m., Ethan got a call from his friend, an owner of a large business. 
The man said that a very important document had disappeared from his office. It had been on his desk the evening before, but now it was nowhere to be found. Ethan immediately came there to question his friend's employees. Soon, he had three suspects. Walter said he'd spent the previous evening at the movies. Joan had dinner with her friends. And Zachary visited an art gallery. It didn't take Ethan long to understand who was lying. Do you know it too? It was Walter. His ticket isn't torn. It means he didn't enter the movie theater. Now, look at these hands and try to figure out which person is married. If you look at the first hand attentively, you'll realize it doesn't belong to a grown-up person. On the second hand, there is a mark left by a ring, but there's no ring itself. It must mean that the person is no longer married. On the third hand, there's no ring either, but it's the right hand, and we wear wedding rings on the left hand. So out of these three, this person is most likely to be married. Okay, the next challenge is for you. Look at these three men. They're at the airport. Which of these guys is married? All of these men are holding their passports and tickets in their hands. None of them is wearing a wedding ring. But pay attention to the man sitting on the bench. On his ticket, it's written, family discount. So, he must be the one who's married. Now look at this picture attentively. Does anything strike you as strange? It's winter, but butterflies are flying around the snowman. Now, try to figure out what's wrong with this image. It's the snowman again. Instead of a carrot, his nose is made of broccoli. And the last image for you to analyze. Why does the guy on the right need ski poles if he's going to snowboard? Marcus woke up in a dark basement with just one candle burning on the table. He saw three doors in one of the walls and three keys lying on the table. How many attempts will the guy need to figure out the key for each door? He'll need six attempts at the most, three of them for the first key, two attempts for the second key and two remaining doors, and just one attempt for the last key. But if Marcus is extremely lucky, he might need just three attempts. Alicia's mom asked the girl to do some grocery shopping. She gave her a shopping list and her bank card. But the woman knew her daughter was very absent-minded. That's why she gave Alicia a small note in case she forgot the card's PIN number. When the girl was at the register, she realized she had indeed forgotten the PIN. Alicia pulled the note out of her pocket and immediately remembered the code. Can you figure out what it was if the note had a fly, a cat, a person, and a snake drawn on it? The pin was 6420. Alicia just had to count the number of legs of each creature. A fancy restaurant in Los Angeles was offering a promotional deal. A married couple could eat at the restaurant for half price on their anniversary. To prevent scams, the couple would need proof of their wedding date. On a Thursday evening, a couple entered the restaurant and claimed it was their anniversary, but they didn't have any proof. The restaurant manager was called to speak with the couple. When the manager asked to hear about their wedding day, the wife said, Oh, it was a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Birds were chirping and flowers were in full bloom. After nearly 10 minutes of ranting, she told the manager that today was their 28th wedding anniversary. 
How lovely, the manager said. However, you do not qualify for the discount. Today is not your anniversary. You are a liar. How did the manager know it wasn't their anniversary? The calendar repeats itself every 28 years. So if they were married on a Sunday 28 years ago, the day they came to the restaurant would also have to be a Sunday. But since it was a Thursday, the manager knew they were lying. John called the police to report that his friend Mark had disappeared. He explained that two weeks earlier, he had offered Mark to live in his beach house in Miami. He wanted his friend to enjoy some summer heat. But when John returned from a half month long business trip to Chile, he found out that Mark was missing. The police listened to John's story and understood the man was lying. How did they figure it out? If it was summer in Miami, it was winter in Chile. And still, John came back suntanned. It means he hadn't been to Chile. Maya was in the gym doing the workout her personal trainer had prepared for her. It was tougher and longer than her usual ones. Exhausted, Maya returned to the changing room only to find her expensive bag gone. Oh no! She immediately called the police. They had three suspects. Maya's trainer said that he had been preparing a new program for his clients. Emma, another gym goer, said she had been running on a treadmill for two hours. The cleaner said he had been washing the swimming pool. Who took Maya's bag? It was her trainer. He knew Maya was going to have a long workout and wouldn't return to the changing room anytime soon. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.